Hello everyone and welcome to video 4 in this tutorial for the Phoenix A320 showing you a full flight from Manchester to Prague. In this video we're going to look at the departure and takeoff getting ourselves up to the cruising altitude. So if you haven't done so already please do check out videos 1, 2 and 3 of this series and it will take you from the cold and dark setup to right here ready to depart. So let's get back in the flight deck as we look at the takeoff in the Phoenix A320. So welcome back on board. Here we are holding at Mic 1 runway 23 right at Manchester just prior to our departure to Prague. Let's just go ahead and show you that whilst we've been holding here, we have turned off the taxi lights. The reason for that is usually you only have the taxi lights on when you are moving. When you're stationary, it's customary to turn the taxi lights off, particularly when you're holding to taxi onto the runway. We don't want any of the lights on our aircraft blinding potentially arriving aircraft onto the runway. So that's the reason why we've currently got our taxi lights turned off. So at this point then, we're just waiting for air traffic control to give as a departure clearance so they would obviously come on and tell us to either line up and wait or that we were uh, cleared for departure in either circumstances as soon as we're told that we can enter the uh, the active runway area we're going to go ahead and get all of our lights on as we're flying in the daytime today what we don't need to get on are the wing lights they're used primarily at night to uh, help check for ice accumulation and build up on the wings so with permission to uh, enter the active runway we're going to turn on the strobe lights the runway turn off lights we're going to get our landing lights turned on as well the taxi lights can come back on to the takeoff position and then we're also going to come up here turn off the packs if we have done our performance calculations for uh, a packs uh, off departure we're then going to come down and turn on the TCAS system we're going to go ahead and set that to TARA and then we're ready to release the parking brake and roll out onto the active runway so let's go ahead and do that we would also if uh, you're watching the live streams at this point would make sure that all the cabin crew were uh, seated and things like that and we have usually self-loading cargo providing those uh, cabin sounds at the moment and time that these uh, tutorial series are being filmed we'll get ourselves lined up and we can now run the before takeoff checklist below the line so our cabin would be secured for takeoff our engine mode selector is normal TCAS is TARA the packs are off and anti-ice is off as well if for some reason during your uh, taxi to the runway you decide looking at the uh, the clouds and the temperature etc that you may be better with anti-ice being turned on for your departure then you can go ahead and turn that on but then you must adjust your flex accordingly so make sure that you drop five degrees from your flex temp for your uh, departure calculation so just to show you what I mean if we decided today we were going to pop the uh, the anti-ice on our flex is currently 64 we'd want to come down here to our performance page and just drop that to 59 so five degrees off the flex for uh, late anti-ice it means that we don't have to go and rerun an entire performance calculation again as that would uh, that would cover it okay so at this point we're all good to go we're just waiting for air traffic control to tell us that we're uh, cleared for takeoff once that happens of course we uh, are going to announce the takeoff we'll start the chrono we'll set 50 percent n1 let the engine spool up they do take a while on these older engines once that's done we can then set our takeoff thrust today it's going to be a flex temp departure and then we're just going to monitor the systems up to v1 when we get to v1 we're committed to takeoff and then we're going to rotate at, uh, at vr speed and then as we rotate we're going to ease back on the side stick and you will notice particularly if you're used to flying the neo aircraft you will notice that perhaps you have to pull back a little bit firmer on the side stick here in the phoenix a320 particularly as you try and rotate the aircraft through 10 degrees of pitch that is a really nice little touch that the phoenix team have put into this and that is once you start to just lift off the ground when you get through that sort of 10 degree pitch the disturbance of the air from the engines goes over the trimmable horizontal stabilizer 
at the back so you need to compensate for that by keeping that back pressure aft into uh, into the side stick remembering of course that in this aircraft there is no rotate law to assist with that we're obviously just going to be following the flight directors and make sure the green crosshairs are uh, nicely centered all right so with all that uh, in mind let's uh, let's go so take off start the chrono set 50% N1 and we're just going to push half forward on the side stick as well and we will release that forward pressure when we pass around 80 knots to be neutral by 100 knots engines are all good and let's advance to man flex SRS and runway little bits of rudder then to try and keep us on the center line we're at 80 knots start releasing that uh, pressure from the side stick so we're neutral by 100 knots and V1 rotate a little bit windy today in the sim so a nice gentle rotation feel that back pressure needs to be uh, kept in to get past the 10 degrees and then we're just looking to try and get that nicely centered positive rate of climb gear up so hand flying this aircraft is an absolute joy we can now see lever climb so what i like to at this point we're going to pop on the autopilot we're going to set climb thrust autopilot's taking care of that once we have set climb thrust let's go ahead and turn the packs back on so pack one 10 seconds between the two if you can not always possible here in a simulated environment as you're a single pilot of course so now let's go ahead and turn on uh, pack two as we pass s speed we can then at that point start to clean up the aircraft so flaps zero and disarm the spoilers the aircraft is now clean autopilot obviously doing its job air traffic control then may tell you at this point that you can uh, increase your uh, increase your climb climb to flight level 200 for example if that is the case then obviously on the FCU the flight control unit up here we're going to set flight level 200 but you then want to pop this in to open climb if you left it in managed climb if there were any constraints on the departure the aircraft would level off so for example at this point there was a constraint on this departure of 5,000 feet at Samba but of course if ATC have told you you can ignore that climb to flight level 200 you then want to make sure you go into open climb so that you don't respect the constraints as you climb to a flight level as well you want to make sure that we've pulled a standard pressure on here and then we're just going to check we've got thrust climb open climb and flight level 200 blue the aircraft will hold 250 knots until it passes flight level 100 10,000 feet at which point we should see the aircraft level off a little bit in order to accelerate I've just noticed as well that I have got the switching panel showing just here I must have called that at some point we can get rid of that the little alert that we've just been given as well you may have seen in your own sims the nav barrow ref discrepancy barrow ref cross check and that is because the way I've got the aircraft set up at the moment we've got the uh, the barrow pressure being set independently on both sides so I've pulled standard over here but I didn't pull standard over on the first officer side you can actually go ahead and link these both in if you go to the sim settings and then to the airline modifiable information it might not be there actually it may be in the controls there it is the EFIS barrow control better probably to have that to linked if we're uh, if we're flying as a single pilot it doesn't however link the standby instrument so the standby is still completely independent so let's go ahead now we're past the transition altitude and we can pop that into standard as well we've just passed 10,000 feet so you'll notice now our rate of climb has leveled off and that is to give the aircraft of the ability to accelerate up to uh, up to its faster speed because we no longer need to hold 250 knots below 10,000 feet one of the other things we can do as well if you're flying real ops is for uh, EasyJet in particular what they will do is in the performance page during the climb they will reduce the cost index to zero this means that it targets a lower speed 
and in order to do that it will pitch up higher so that means we climb to our cruising altitude a lot faster if we just check this out at the moment you can see the magenta triangle showing our targeted speed if I then go and change this to zero in the cost index we can see that that has dropped ever so slightly so the way the aircraft will bleed off speed is to increase the pitch which means we're going to climb a little uh, a little bit faster meaning we reach our, cruis reach our cruising level faster as well we're now above 10,000 feet so we're happy to get the uh, seatbelt signs off and let the passengers uh, roam around the cabin etc. All we need to do now is just monitor the systems until we get up to our cruising altitude. That then is pretty much it. The only other things we need to do after we've passed 10,000 feet is we can pop airports onto the uh, navigation display so we can uh, see what airports are around in case uh, of an emergency and we need them. And finally, we just then want to go to our progress page and check. We've got a cruise flight level today planned at flight level 370. The aircraft is telling us, however, that the optimum is 360. Ideally, you don't want to go above your optimum. So for now, perhaps until we've burnt off some fuel and we're a little bit lighter we're going to only climb up to flight level 350 remember of course that if you're flying east you need to have an odd altitude if you're flying west generally you need to have an even altitude so let's go ahead now and set flight level 350 if you're on the VATSIM network of course you need to contact and liaise with air traffic control to make sure that that's going to be okay so flight level 350 blue and we're on our way that's about it then for the takeoff and uh, climb part of our uh, tutorial series. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well if you are new to the channel and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future live streams and content. If you do have any questions regarding anything you've seen in this video, please leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to come and answer those as, uh, as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye for now.